this brief presentation, we will show you around a clinical biochemistry laboratory and talk about some of the work that happens there. Within clinical biochemistry, we measure substances such as glucose, cholesterol, proteins and hormones to identify disease and to monitor the effectiveness of medical treatments. Such measurements also contribute to research into the causes and cures of disease. A large number of analytical methods are used to detect and measure these substances. Some of these involve very complex equipment, but however complicated the method in the laboratory, we never forget that a patient's health may depend on the accuracy of our results. Healthcare is a team effort, and in television programmes such as Casualty and ER, when the medics call out for laboratory results, STAT, there is the work of a team of scientists making sure the results are available throughout the 24 hours of the day or night. Here we see an actual reagent for T-bill, which is short for total bilirubin. The reagent chemicals are added to a fraction of a blood sample, and a colour change in the reagent, from colourless to bright pink or red, will be seen. This is one type of large routine analyzer that you may expect to find in clinical biochemistry in any medium to large size hospital. Its repertoire would include glucose to investigate diabetes, urea to check and monitor kidney disease, as well as cholesterol, an important contributing factor of heart disease. In a busy laboratory, a million tests might be performed in any one year. The laboratory also measures hormones. The methods can again be automated and involve a technique known as immunoassay, where antibodies are used as reagents. You see on hospital television programs, I think somebody asks for blood urgently, and then no more is said of it. And, and, and people will realise that we are on the end of these requests, uh, providing an urgent service. And, and many diagnoses and, are made through the work of the clinical biochemistry lab. And here in proteins, conditions such as myeloma and multiple sclerosis, uh, we're a large part of the, the diagnosis of those diseases. There are a large number of proteins in blood and a number of diseases are associated with changes in concentration of certain types of proteins. Separation of blood into fractions can help in the diagnosis and monitoring of response to treatment in certain diseases. Confirmatory tests using antibodies and reagents are performed to characterise the exact type of disease process which is present. This blood meter measures pH, which is an index of the degree or acidity or alkalinity of fluids. The pH of the blood is often required to be monitored in acutely ill patients. Equipment which allows for the pH monitoring of blood and at the same time measures relative oxygen and carbon dioxide levels are described as blood gas analyzers. Here we see a demonstration sample passing by the electrodes for oxygen, carbon dioxide and pH.
and here we see the results being printed off. pH, carbon dioxide CO2 and oxygen O2. Here we see the component colours of ink from a felt tip pen being separated out on a sheet of filter paper. The principle illustrates a laboratory procedure called chromatography. Toxicology is the investigation of drugs and poisons. The drugs may be those prescribed by a doctor or they may be illicit drugs.